Hello, and welcome to today's training on how to submit an institutional UB04 claim form using the Access Online Provider Portal. Submitting an institutional claim form using the Access Online Provider Portal is simple and easy to do. So let me show you how. First, you'll need to go to the Access website at www.azaccess.gov. Here, you'll notice a burgundy toolbar, and along the top, select the Plans and Providers tab. On the left, select Access Online. Once you click on that link, it will bring you to the Access Online Provider Portal sign-in page. Simply enter your username and password and click Sign In. Before I show you the process for submitting an institutional claim, I want to point out that we will be submitting a mock institutional claim form. The information and data used in this mock claim should not be used on a live claim. So with that being said, let us begin. Once you're signed in, it will bring you to the main page. You'll notice on the left a menu with various different options. Since we will be submitting a claim today, we will select Claims Submission. This will bring you to this page right here. Under the Enter New Claim heading, select the type of claim you would like to submit. For today's tutorial, we will select an institutional claim, and then we will select Go. Once you click Go, it'll bring you to a page like this. Here, you'll notice various tabs along the top. We will navigate through these tabs to work our way through the system to enter information into our claim. You'll also notice at the bottom of each page, three buttons, Save, Submit, and Cancel. Please do not click on any of these buttons until the very end. I'll instruct you when you can finally click on the Submit button. All right, so we will begin with our Submitter tab right here. On this tab, it'll give us information on who is submitting the claim form. Please verify this information is correct. If the information is for some reason incorrect, please contact the Access Provider Enrollment Unit at 602-417-7670. Once you verify the information is correct, you may move on to the next tab, which is Providers. You'll notice that when you click on Providers, it'll bring up subtabs such as Billing Provider, Referring Provider, Service Facility, Attending, and Operating Provider. Let us begin by using the Billing Provider tab. Here, we'll enter information into the fields for our billing provider. You'll notice that as we work through the screens, anything with a red asterisk will indicate a required field. I have also entered some of the information prior to our tutorial to save some time. Here on the Billing Provider tab, we'll enter our tax ID number and select the EIN bullet. Next, you'll enter your provider NPI number in this field. If you do not have a provider NPI number, simply select your provider commercial number field and enter your six digit access ID number. Next, you'll select your entity type, whether it's a person or non-person entity, such as a facility or clinic. Once you do that, click on the find button and it'll bring up your provider information, such as name, contact information, and telephone number. Once you verify this information is correct, you may now move on to the service locator code and the pay to locator code. Simply make your selection from the drop down menu for each. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, it'll auto populate with the address for each. Now that you've entered your information, you can move on to your next tab. For today's tutorial, I'm not going to enter referring, service, attending, or operating provider information. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the patient subscriber tab. Here, you'll enter information about the member for who you're submitting the claim. You'll first enter the member ID number, which is the access ID number, which will begin with a capital letter A, followed by eight numerical digits. Then you'll enter the member's date of birth using a two-digit month, two-digit day, and four-digit year format. Once you enter that information, click on Find. This will bring up the member's name, gender, and address. Verify this information is correct. Now, once you do that, we will select the payer responsibility. 
For this field, we will select access payment responsibility after all Medicare and first and third party payers. For today's example, we will use access as a primary payer. Okay. Once you make that selection, you can move on to your next tab. If you have other payers, you'll move on to the other payer tab. Since we've selected access as the primary pair, we will move on to the next tab, which is codes and values. You'll notice when you click on the tab, it'll bring up subtabs, such as procedure codes, diagnosis, condition, occurrence, and value codes. Enter information along the appropriate tabs. I am not entering any procedure codes for today's tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the Diagnosis Code tab. Here we see a red asterisk. Enter your principal diagnosis code right here. If you need to enter additional codes, enter them down below. Next, we will go to our Attachments tab. Providers will use this tab as part of, part of the process of submitting documentation to a claim such as, but not limited to, medical records, explanation of benefits, the daily trip report, and so on. If you do not have any documents that you would like to link to your claim, then simply skip this tab and continue on with the claim information tab. The attachments tab here on the Access Online Provider Portal works hand in hand with the Transaction Insight Portal. When using this tab, it will hold the claim for 15 days to allow the provider to upload documents into the Transaction Insight Portal. The Transaction Insight Portal is where providers submit the actual documentation. Please be on the lookout for a video tutorial on how to use the Transaction Insight Portal. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example of how we can use this tab. For the report type, I'm gonna select from the dropdown B4 referral form. For report transmission from the drop down, I'm going to select EL for electronically only because we will be submitting electronic documentation on the Transaction Insight Portal. Now, here for the control number, this is also known as the PWK number. This is a unique number that providers create to link documents to their claims. Here, we recommend that providers use the member's access ID number, which is here, the first half, followed by the date of service to create a unique control number. Do not use any spaces or special characters when creating the control number. Also, be sure to write this number down as you'll use it to link your documents that you upload to the Transaction Insight Portal to this claim. The numbers must match exactly in each, otherwise your documents will not link to the claim. Once you're done entering your information, we're gonna go on to our next tab, which is claim information. For the first three questions, select the appropriate bullets for each. For the patient control number, simply input the number. Now, the patient control number is not the same as the PWK number in the previous screen. This number is used internally by a provider's office to identify a patient. For today's example, we're simply going to use the member's access ID number. For the patient status, select your option from the drop down menu. For the total claim amount, select the total for all service lines. Be sure to also select the facility type code for the type of facility you're at. And for your standard, please select the appropriate ICD, ICD codes. Since we no longer use ICD-9 codes, please select ICD-10. Over on the right, select your admission date and statement from in two dates using the two-digit month, two-digit day, and four-digit year formats. And also select your claim form bill type. Once you've finished entering your information, you may move on to the next tab, which is service lines. On this page, we'll enter our lines of service. Enter your service dates, and down below, either choose your revenue code or HIPPIC code. Next, input your service unit count and select either days or units. And also be sure to include your line item charge amount. Once you're done entering your information, click the Add button. And this will bring up the information for your line of service. 
If you notice a mistake, click on the pencil to make any changes in the fields above and then click update. If you need to del delete a line, click on the X. And if you'd like to add additional lines of service, input your information in the fields and click add. Once you're finished adding your lines of service, you may now finally click the submit button. Once you do so, you'll be brought to a page that looks like this. If you have any in missing information, a little box will pop up about right here and it'll tell you what tab you're missing information on. Simply go back to that tab and input that information and then click Submit. Now, once you click Submit, you can see if your claim was submitted successfully by looking at the transmission status. It will say successful. This means you have now submitted your claim on the Access Online Provider Portal. You now have a couple different options to choose from. You can either view your claim or enter a new claim. If you do not enter a new claim, you can simply log out. Also, as a reminder, if you need to submit any documentation, be sure you submit that documentation on the Transaction Insight Portal. Well, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and you saw how easy it is to submit a claim using the Access Online Provider Portal. I would like to thank you for joining me today. Thank you and have a great day.